were aiming for a certain prestige and quality with this film that I don't even think most modern horror films aim for. This is the film that if we were both 16 years old and we saw this movie, we would be so stoked. Stu and I have known each other for a long time and we just started bouncing ideas back and forth and ultimately we landed on just kind of this notion that there's not a lot of cool alien movies out there. You see a lot more like zombie films, ghost films. There hadn't been really a cool alien film that Stu and I were stoked on that had been made within the, like a decade basically. So we started just kind of spitballing ideas. We really wanted to start it out as a small cabin in the woods film and take the audience on a journey that they don't expect to ultimately go where they do, which is outer space. We're able to really see a lot of talented people for all the roles. I mean, Brittany Allen, Freddie Stroma, Melanie Papalia, Jesse Moss, Anya. Sorry, Anya, I don't know how. I you told me you had to pronounce your Are last you name kidding? before. What? I don't know how to pronounce your last name. It's probably Savic. No, Savic? No, it's like Sashi or Sashi. Sashi. Oh, God. And then Gil Bellows and Michael Ironside rounding out the rest of our cast. Luckily for us, Ironside was right at the top of our list when we approached him. It's a basic, simple agreement with one cardinal rule. Do not engage. And you, you engaged. From the very beginning, even the first draft of the script, flying saucer crashes and it's unbelievable, but it's real. It's and the kids find it and it's undeniably a crash flying saucer. We didn't want it to be some crazy out of the box concept. We always had a really clear vision as to what we wanted the UFOs to look like, what we wanted the alien to look like. We never wanted to stray too far outside of the human expectation as to what people would think an alien should look like. If I close my eyes and go to sleep and I had a nightmare about aliens, I'm not going to dream about squid people. I'm going to have a nightmare about gray aliens with big eyes. And to me, that makes it inherently more real. We were going to build a puppet uh, that would be puppeteered from behind with rods. It was going to be a big, full-sized puppet of it, which is like nine feet tall. And when we hooked up with the effects company that ended up doing the movie, Waterproof Studios, the first thing they said is don't do the alien practically. No matter what you do, you can't make rubber look real. We can do a better job. They modeled the alien before they'd even really gotten the job to prove that they could do it. They modeled the alien based on a concept art that we'd already had done before. And as soon as we saw even just a first test of what that alien looked like, we were pretty much sold because it just looked so incredibly detailed. There was a few days were really tricky time. It was always a race. Oftentimes, Stu and I would be like, can we combine this scene and this scene and make our day? One of the most stressful days of shooting for me was the light show in the house. We shot the first eight days of shooting were all in the cabin and one of the days was was a very tricky day. It's um, in the scene when essentially a mothership is over top of the house and there's a crazy amount of lighting going on through the windows. And we had like, I think, maybe six hours to do it all. You gotta go to the basement! Great! All right, so you got that, right, Stu? Action. Love story. Let's talk about the love story. <laughs> no, let's not talk about, no, let's not talk about that. on the spaceship we were insane to try and achieve it to pull it off and we were gung-ho on having huge scope and an epic reveal of what this mothership would be and 
and Waterproof did a great job working within our budget to, to save our ass and make it look like we had 10 times the money we did. Anal probe, anal probe, anal probe. Stu, you dreamt up the anal probe, did you not? I believe that I did, Colin. You were like, we gotta do an anal probe scene. I think I thought at first that that was absolutely stupid and we should not do that. Yeah, it's just become such a joke in pop culture, the anal probe, ha 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 ha. If you really think about experiencing that, it's not really funny. The whole probe, it's all computer generated. When the probe is going, these things go ching and open, and that's just like such a great touch. The ending shot was honestly such an ambitious shot, out of our budget, out of our timeline. We took three quarters of a day to shoot it, and I'm really glad we did because I think it is a really memorable thing and a fun thing to end the film on. We blended Steadicam to Technocrane to Dolly. It took probably six months of post to finish the shot. It was sort of timed along with Spirit in the Sky, and we didn't even know if we were gonna get that song, and I think I just got super headstrong and said, I don't care, no matter what happens, we'll get the fucking song, don't worry about it, we're getting the fucking song. And somehow fate just shined upon us, and we were somehow able to get the song for a very cheap rate, way cheaper, Gen cheaper generous. than I think. Very, very generous. generous. So thank you, Elton John, if you're out there. I don't know if you had anything to do with that. I'm gonna like to think that you did.